guys, Ramblin' Bob here again. Now, this is a very exciting video. This is like Franken, Franken Pickron, right? Franken Pickron, Miss Rambly Bob is here. Hi! Okay, so here's what we're doing. This All this craziness that you see here, guys. This is the E1000 LFP. Uh, this one we're not using. It's just there just because, as you see, everything's stacked up. So this is the main use it, uh, unit that we're using. And this unit with that power dumping cable from Pecron, as you can see, comes all the way down here into this circuit. And this is an auto circuit that is a 40 amp auto circuit that can uh, uh, snap, it, you know, like a safety thing. Uh, that way it's, it, it's basically like a fuse except a circuit. And then that is it's got connected. an O snap handle, right? Uh, an O snap, yeah. yeah so you just you open it like this, guys, and then you can literally just kill it by doing that. Or if it overheats or anything, it does it by itself. That's why this is a essential part when you put a battery pack to a battery pack. Now these two systems are the same uh, voltage is 51.2 and 51.2 is 48 point uh, 48 volt battery pack and a 48 volt battery pack. That is also essential. You can't mix voltages mm -hmm. with battery packs. So as you can see, we're putting the input here, guys. 1,000 and 46 watts so a thousand plus watts we're bringing into over here this is charging from another system that's way over there that we this it's like frankenstein guys we got them everywhere we got them everywhere so what we're doing is we're bringing in a thousand watts plus into this system and then this system here and that is pretending to be one big system okay so instead of a 1000 uh, watt hour system it is now a six thousand watt hour system with an 1800 watt inverter now the reason i'm doing it on the small one is two reasons number one cheapest one that i have that is expandable and i thought well if i make a mistake i'd rather break a smaller one than a bigger one right that's kind of a smart move yeah the other one is i wanted to see since i don't use that much and this has an 1800 watt inverter and we don't use I, how much do you think i mean not even a thousand usually yeah. yeah so we wanted to use this also to have this a secondary or a third dairy if it, third i don't know what you call it a third in dairy, a, a third in dairy. <laughs> um so long story short the e3600 lfp is a 15,000 uh watt hour system that's our main and then with that one over there which is up top here is a e2000 lfp and these are the batteries for that so these two and those two are for the e3600 which is way over there you oh, can you barely see, see. okay that, yeah. that pipes in the way there we got that little light here so way over there as you can see right here is the go. e3600 lfp and then on top of it here this battery and this battery uh that is here if i could go up a little bit here guys sorry um there it's, it's like a mush we got a mush full of power stations guys uh so uh, the E3600 LFP, the four batteries, the E2000, and the two batteries, and what we use that for is a gas tank, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Yeah. So when the E3600 LFP is full of power from the sun, we put the uh, uh, power dumping cable, which is here. Hopefully you can see this, guys. This cable down here, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, this cable down here goes into the E2000, and then we get... Uh, up to 8,000 watt hours of a gas tank, if you will, for a system, okay? Let me put these back real quick. So now, what we were doing is, since we have this rack server, this is called a server rack battery, in case you don't know. Um, this is oh, by Ruxu. Um, oops, sorry. This one. Down. Okay, there we go. Um, so th this is called a server rack battery. Sorry, guys. Um, and what we wanted to do is, since we weren't using it, we want to utilize it through this thing now notice that this does not have any screens on it other than the soc which stands for the state of charge over here the run and the alarm so that's all you really need we got dots yep and then this is set to master one which is means it's a battery all by itself so how you uh, uh if, if you do have one of these how you can see it is on this laptop through this communication cable this communication cable it's five bucks okay so we bought that too yep didn't you make a whole video showing that? Yep, yeah, I mean, you can go back and watch how this thing works. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a good, and you, you it's can a good video. Yeah, you can set all kinds of stuff, guys. But be careful. When you mess with parameters of that thing, it can get very dangerous. Um, so it, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to pick this up, guys. I'll do my best here. Like I said, i got cables everywhere. So don't this is basically yeah. what we're doing. Now, notice that in that server rack battery over here. Oh, by the way, I have to say this. 
we got this idea from Jason Wright. So Jason Wright, thank you. Thank you very Hi, much for the channel you have and the knowledge you've been teaching us over the years. We love it. Uh, Jason Wright and Will, two of our favorites for sure. Will Prowse. Will, yeah, Will Prowse. Yes. Uh, that's a DIY, with, a DIY with Will Prowse and then the legendary Jason Wright. Yeah. So um, notice that the pack is bringing in 12.95 amps. So just about 13 amps is going through that system through that cable through that circuit breaker which is that's essential and then into the system itself and notice that blinking light right there i don't know let me have my pointer here that little blinking right right uh, light right down here mm -hmm. shows that that energy is actually going in there and then i can see the actual cells uh let me pull a cable here real quick guys okay i can actually see the battery cells here so if uh, if you don't have uh, a server rack battery and you want to try something like this this is a way to access, hey, is it doing it correctly or not, by the actual numbers and the hard numbers. So now notice this, watch this, 55.78 amp hours. That's the remaining amp hours. The whole pack is 100. Now watch this goes up. See this, 79.80? I don't know if you can see that, guys. Can you think you, they could see that? I think they can see that. So this, see this, 82, 83. That's how fast it's going up here, guys. And when that gets to 100... The, uh, the uh, MPPT controller is basically uh, um, charging this thing, and then this thing is balancing the entire system into a 6,000 watt hour system. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pause the, um, uh, just so I can show you how this works, because uh, it's going to take a while to charge, guys. That's a big, you know, big battery. So notice it says... Uh, 13 amps and notice that there's no minus there that means that energy is going into yeah. that server rack yeah. right yes yeah, smart smart okay now what we're going to do is we're going to stop pause the um the charging which i'm actually uh, charging uh through the ac of the e2000 lfp because it's uh, mm -hmm. half full and i thought well let's put it over here so we don't have to pull from the wall for this test we got pecron on pecron on pecron on, on Ruxu. yeah yeah you got the whole party's here <laughs> okay so now <laughs> what i all here now what i want you to see guys is notice that uh that light down there is still charging the the, the blinking one let me get yeah. my little pointer here oh um you're dangerous see, with that pointer yep yeah, see down there that blinking light now notice that this went down to point nine five amps and notice it's falling so what it's doing now is it's balancing between this and this and it's it's going to balance to where it just sits basically like one super big battery so the reason i paused it is now what we're going to do is we're going to pull um this thing okay and where can i put this here we're running out of room can you see it here a little bit you can see the corner of it Okay, so we'll move it over here, and then we're going to go into here. Now, I want to show you how this works as one big battery. Okay, so like right there. That, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Okay, guys. So what I'll do is I'll show you this laptop again. <laughs> After I, I fire this up, okay, and you're going to see that the energy is going to draw from, obviously, this, because that's where it's plugged in, but then it's going to pull some energy from here, and then it's going to pull the rest of the energy from there. The majority is going to come from the bigger battery, of course, because once those are equally balanced, um, you know, it'll pull from the bigger battery, obviously, uh, you know, the extra power because it has that extra power. So one of the big things I noticed here is, you notice this is at 93%, and that one is not even at, what is it, at, it's at 50, 56% state of charge. Obviously, that's really weird, right? Well, 93% of, of one kilowatt hour is obviously um, e equal-ish to 56% of five kilowatts. You see what I'm saying? So it, 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 it's, it's still balancing. So it'll, it'll, it'll balance out. So basically, long story short, guys, this percentage number will become useless long term. So instead of watching the balance, uh, the percentage number, I put it on the voltage because the voltage is what you want to keep track of. The system does not understand that that 5,000 watt hour battery is connected to it. The battery just knows that, oh, another battery is here, I'll balance. Like two swimming pools, if one is a higher voltage, it'll go like this and kind of balance. That's what voltage does, it moves like water. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a draw of 1500 watts out with this bad boy here and then you can see that it'll pull some energy from here 
but the majority will come from there and that's what you want you want this thing to you know drop down equally and then uh you know shut off like this will probably go to one percent uh you know down the road uh before this will it'll stay at one percent but it'll keep running but the the battery inside is actually not at one percent so the voltage is what you look at that's that's what i mean about if you do so a mod like this uh this percentage number is it becomes useless basically um so you want to watch your voltage okay so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna fire this up here uh, the ac is on i'm gonna hit the button now you're gonna know that uh or notice right away see 1500 watts out approximately and if you look at this you will see that that just jumped up to uh negative 17.3 amps so that's approximately just a hair under 900 watts is actually coming from that battery right now so as you can see uh, 900 watts from this battery and then approximately 500 watts from this battery now that'll you know it, it'll differ uh, depending on the the voltage of both systems of course I'm trying to get them balanced this is the first time I tried this and I didn't start any fires so I thought I was doing really good uh, that's that's a positive but as you can see this voltage has voltage sag of course because remember this is an 1800 watt inverter and this is probably the absolute peak that we'd run on this right mm -hmm. yeah like this 14 or 1500 watts um so that's you know like i said why i wanted to try a smaller system like this but uh pr proof of concept i did want to do the exact same thing that jason or i did and um luckily so i, I used a similar not the same but similar hookups of what he did except i have a different battery pack and instead of uh, what he did is he uh, took uh, these cables over here. I don't know. Can you see me, babe? Uh, nope. Can you see these cables? Yeah, you okay. can see them. So he took these and he pigtailed, uh, basically daisy chain these together, and then pigtailed them into the circuit where I actually had an extra one of these cables, those power dumping cables, which is this, and I cut the ends and I put it in there permanently. Uh, not permanently, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it, it's actually inside... Uh, going in and then they're split off the positive of this one and the positive of that one going to the positive and the negative of this one negative of that one going to the negative um, I was going to do the whole cord but obviously the, the holes are not big enough to get this fat cable through there so I left it as two and then put it back together as one and then this one has a huge cable on the other side this cable is able to go 600 volts at 150 amps which that's that's crazy so I'll never use that much let me move this stuff around here, guys. Okay, so this is uh, just step one, and then, ooh, I'll turn this off. It is, it's hot. <laughs> you don't so, want to be extra crispy warm? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's nice, but it's hot. All right, guys, so th this is my proof of concept here. I'm trying it out, and then here, like I said, we'll watch one more time here and see what it does. Now, remember, it was pulling out 17 amps out of the big battery over there, and now notice that went down to negative 0.35 amps, and you'll see that see that's dropping see it's 27 24 20 and obviously that's that, that voltage is balancing again so yep see there you go look at pack zero so that means the voltage of that is now equal to the voltage of that so there's there's no movement of the voltage and you can also in this software i forgot to show you this uh you can do um multi-monitoring and that way you can see in real time you can see that the, the total current See, it drops down, and this goes every two seconds. You can set it to any interval you want, but notice that the, the current is zero, which means that system now is, uh, it's not perfectly balanced yet, but if I let it sit, you know, that voltage will kind of, you know, balance between the two. Or if I start doing this again, if I turn this on again here, guys, you're going to see that voltage uh, shoot up a little bit because we're, we're going to charge again. And then on this real-time monitoring page here, it just takes a second for that inverter to click on. Okay, you heard the click. And now right here, you're going to start seeing, see, 0.35, see, 0.27. And then as that ramps up, you'll see, see this, 2.68, 4.44. Now, these are amps now. That's your amperage pull. And that's what's actually going in that battery over there. So here, 10, 10.43, about 11. There's 11.07, 11.15, 11.26. So remember, it's going to pull about 11 
11 amps. So you could either watch it on that screen with a Ruxu or you could watch it on this one. I like this one because you can see each individual battery cell. And it just, you know, it's the same numbers, but I do like seeing the battery cells because it makes me feel safer, right? If you could see yeah. all 16 cells and if you had a problem with one, you could see it right away. So this is the Frankenstein Pecron. The the Frankenpeck. I don't know how to say Whoa. it, guys. <laughs> the Frankenpeck. All right, That's guys. As you can see, thousand watts in. Remember, eleven amps is going in there, and the rest is going in here. So it's 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 using it the way I intended it. Frankenron. A, a, a Frankenron. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're have to figure out a name for it, guys. But um, put, put your names down in the comments. Yeah. Well, what do you okay. want us to call this, guys? Yeah. Uh, now, here's the reason I want to do this. Like I said, I don't need a lot of power for my workshop. And this would be a great backup to run, uh, you know, like a, a gas tank style. So here's my theory. Imagine if I had two, three, four, five, six, or ten of these things, right? If you had a bunch of these and you had them all in that big cage and then you went off that bus bar into that, it would charge all of Obviously, it would take forever, right? 1,800 watts times 30,000 watt hours would take a long time. However, it would be really cool as a backup gas tank to have server rack batteries as long as they all compatible that's the key guys you have to have them the same voltage and everything um, for this to work you can't put a 24 volt battery into a 48 volt system not cool and very dangerous at that but uh all right guys that is the uh idea that i had uh, leave your comments down if you guys got uh, better ideas for me to do uh, how to make the system a little bit better once this i was going to mount this one more thing i was going to mount this vertical on the wall right because these you can put any uh, any direction as long as you have the breather vent holes open. Thank you, Jason, right, for that tip. Uh, so we're going to mount that vertical on the wall, run the cable underneath this little thing here, and then into the system. So that way this will be behind there and you won't even see it. And then I can access the information from uh, the USB and to a small laptop. And you don't need it all the time, guys, because, like I said, you have your warnings, you have all your safeties, and then your state of charge is there. It is easier to do this with a uh, system or a rack server system that has a screen and all that stuff on the actual box as opposed to having to do this. But this is a way around that, guys. So hopefully this uh, sparks some uh, some knowledge. Obviously, try this at your own risk, guys. It's it's not a, uh, a safe thing to do uh, to play with uh, big batteries like that when you're not sure. Uh, learn as much as you can. Uh, thank you once again to DIY with Will and Jasonoid. Uh, awesome channels. I recommend if you you probably know about them already, but if you don't, I highly recommend you check them out. He's, those guys can teach you a lot of stuff and literally keep you alive longer. So that's a positive. All right, guys, this is uh, video one of uh, Frank and Ron. I don't know what to call video it. Video one of question mark. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, my Frank and Peck run. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, ramble on. Be safe, and I'll, I'll see you here again for updates with this crazy idea in the future. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.